The Love Bug just, it was definitely a 60s movie because it dealt with peace and love and, you know, of course, Herbie, him being a matchmaker, you know, he just, he's just all about love. The original Love Bug, I think, is the model for all the other movies. I think it holds up as being the diamond compared to the others. I certainly don't intend losing any sleep over that absurd car. Before the Disney studio decided on casting Michelle Lee to play Carol, they considered another actress, Yvette Mimieux. There is a mock-up poster that was done, and it's got Dean and Yvette's face on it, and they're in Herbie. And also on the mock-up, they showed that Herbie would be a red Volkswagen instead of white. Of course, they cast Michelle Lee, which was a beautiful choice at that. I don't know if many people know this or not, but during the cross-country big road race, after the yellow bus goes by, the next scene is a miniature model of the cars racing. They even added puffs of smoke for the effect as the cars go behind the mountain. To promote the love bug, they had a Herbie Day at Disneyland, which was on March 23rd, 1969. It was great because they sent out the word, I guess you could say, saying that if you bring your Volkswagen, decorate it however you want to decorate it, then it'll be in a parade and then you'll, you'll get a prize. <laughs> Disneyland was overwhelmed with Volkswagens. The parking lot was full. There were spider Volkswagens. There were peace, love Volkswagens. There were bugs. There were anything that people could think of. They had the contest, you know, and, and uh, the winner was announced, and they all drove down to uh, the main street and all the way down, and, and they ended up at Small World. The winner was there, and that's where Dean Jones gave the winner his grand prize. It's like, wow. You know, you used to seeing Herbie, and then you see this car dressed up. It was, it was pretty funny. They also did another promotion, which was Disney on Parade. And it was basically a show that would go from town to town, and it had Disney characters in it. Herbie's hood's going up and down, and he had teeth and eyelashes, and it was just funny to see that. In 1974 came the first sequel, Herbie Rides Again. And Rides Again, you look, I mean, Herbie is driving, you know, on the wires of the Golden Gate Bridge, you know? <laughs> he is uh, surfing. He goes driving right off the pier, right into the water, and takes a dive, and next thing you know, he's surfing, ends up on the beach. There's a scene where Herbie has to get away from Alonzo Hawks' henchman, you know? So he's cornered, he's at the, this dead-end street. What does he do? He just drives up the, uh, the side of the mountain and just goes on right past him. So again, the effects just make the movie, and then you've got the actors, and they even enhance it so much more. One interesting thing I found out about Herbie Rides Again was that Helen Hayes was not originally cast as Grandma Steinmetz. They cast Walter Brennan as Grandpa Steinmetz. But unfortunately, Walter Brennan passed away, so the studio had to, to recast it. Come along, Herbie, off to market. I think it worked out better because... Thank you, Herbie. You have Herbie, which is this lovable, gentle soul and Helen Hayes is really the same, so they worked well together as if they're taking care of each other. Oh, Herbie, behave yourself. You've got my glasses off. I think Herbie Rides Again is right up there compared to Love Bug because there is so much action, and the actors, they bring so much animated type quality to it that it keeps it going. To promote Herbie Rides Again, they did Another Herbie Day at Disneyland, which was on July 11, 1974. And it was a syndicated TV show. And they had all the cars there and decorate them up, and, and then they gave a prize out. They also had a promotion with the Volkswagen dealerships in 74 that if you went and you bought a Volkswagen, you could also buy a kit, which was, you know, the red, white, and blue stripes, the 53, and everything. You could decorate your Volkswagen to be a Herbie. That's going to be some race, huh? Yeah. Well, you're looking at the winner right here. This car, the winner? <laughs> in 1977, the third hurry movie came along. He didn't. He did. Destination, monsieur, Monte Carlo. Disney did Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, which was on June the 24th, 1977. Hey, Herbie, where are you going? Starred Dean Jones back in the role as uh, Jim Douglas. Don Knotts played Willie Applegate and uh, Julie Somers which was Diane. Disney kept it playful, kept it fun, and it just made Herbie an even bigger Disney character. 
Herbie did all that he always did. Squirted the oil, you know, on, on someone's foot. And they're back at the Golden Oak Ranch, going to the same pond that he skidded across for the love bug. But they did a twist on that. Instead of Herbie skidding across, Herbie's flying toward the water. And you think, OK, here it comes again. No, he just hits it dead on. And then the next scene, you see Don knots his head in the middle of the lake. Of course, Herbie is just driving along on the bottom of the pond, and his head's just floating along. Catch anything? Really fun stuff. I didn't think so. This movie still has the Disney flavor, because when you see Herbie, you automatically think of Dean Jones, and you think of Jim Douglas, the, the character he played. So it's great to be able to see them back together again. And it's also great to see Don Knotts, who was also doing a lot of other Disney movies during that time. Right. That they cast him as Willie Applegate, the mechanic. My tools! Where's my tools? Which I think is perfect comedy relief. Dean and right Don Knotts really worked well together. I knew that. Oh, Dean was great. We're supposed to be chasing something or being chased or whatever. We're going through this, oh, all this traffic is in and out. I thought, boy, these stunt drivers are great. So we get in, and the director says, let's we have to do that once more. And I said, well, those stunt drivers are great. And the guy said, what stunt drivers? I didn't stunt drivers. And so Dean was just doing this in real traffic, going around those traffic circles in Paris. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't do that again, are we? <laughs> and Herbie goes to Monte Carlo. This was the first time that Herbie fell in love with uh, Alonso. And uh, when you see it, the pretty little powder blue Lancia with the yellow stripes and the number seven on the side, you can see why Herbie would fall in love. For Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, Disney had a brilliant idea for a, a publicity stunt. There's a famous theater on Hollywood Boulevard, which is called Grauman's Chinese Theater, and that's where Sid Grauman had all the stars from Hollywood to come and they, you know, put their footprints, handprints, leg prints, you name it, in cement. So the Disney Studio thought it would be great if they would have Herbie put his tire prints at Grauman's Chinese Theater, which I think is great because why not have Herbie there with all the other famous stars in Hollywood? Of course, once I found out that Herbie had his tire prints, at Groman's Chinese Theater, you know, I hightailed it up there. But uh, it was a publicity stunt, you know, in 77, and uh, it only stayed there for a little while. So I'm sorry to say Herbie's tire prints were no longer there, but uh, for a brief, brief time, they were. Okay, get ready to peel off. In 1980, the fourth Herbie was released, Herbie Goes Bananas. They used 26 Volkswagens for the film, which when you watch the film, you can see why. I mean, all the other movies, Herbie is, is known for all the stunts. In this one, they just about killed him. I mean, <laughs> Herbie is swimming down the Panama Canal. He's just a big rust bucket. Gentlemen, do your duty. I think the most painful scene for me to watch is when Herbie has to walk the plank off the cruise ship. He's on his back, his wheels are turning, and he's crying, and then they just slowly push him off, and he goes plummeting into the ocean. popular scene in Herbie Goes Bananas is when Herbie is actually fighting a bull. No Toros! So he's the matador, and the bull is charging him. And, and again, that's a, a great effect. Herbie is actually out there fighting the bull. He, he's, he don't make no bones about it. I can't believe this. 30 years at sea, I'm not going to die in a bull ring. Of course, he's got Cloris Leachman and, and Harvey Corman in the car. And again, Herbie, being so lovable, he's protecting his owners. What's your name? Okay? I just call you Ocho, okay? Herbie has to save the little boy who has named Herbie Ocho, which you find out at the end of the film that uh, Ocho in Spanish means eight. Why do you keep calling this car Ocho? Five and three are eight. Anyone knows that. I always thought that was a great little inside thing. 
Another great scene is that Herbie has to stop this plane from taking off. Herbie is chasing the plane down the runway, and he gets up to the tail end of the airplane, and so he opens his hood, and he's chomping down, you know, and he's, he's doing his best to stop it. He's going to ram us! He destroys this airplane. I mean, just completely destroys it, rips it apart, the wings fly off. The stunts were really, really cool in this movie. Herbie Goes Bananas was co-produced by Kevin Cochran. Now, that name may sound familiar to you. Well, he was Moochie, you know, in the Mickey Mouse Club and to all the other Disney movies that he was in. I think he wants to tell us something. It's a car woman, not Lassie. In 1982, Herbie got his own TV series. It was five episodes. Dean Jones was cast as Jim Douglas again, which was great because they worked so well together. In 1989, Herbie was part of the tour at Disney's MGM Studios in Florida. Unfortunately, there was an electrical fire, and uh, he caught fire and burned up. And of course, that was something that was just unfortunate, and uh, they decided not to, to put Herbie back um, on the backlot tour. But uh, it was fun while it lasted. In 1997, Herbie appeared in his first TV movie which is a remake from the original 1969 Love Boat on the wonderful world of Disney. I remember going to the set, which was in Pasadena, where the, the main garage was, and uh, Dean Jones was there, and of course, Herbie was there, and uh, they're together again. And uh, this was the first time that uh, you actually saw an evil Herbie, which was the alternate Herbie. And it was also great to see the evil Herbie destroyed at the end. All the fire. It's amazing that, you know, they've done all these movies on Herbie, that he's had a TV show, he's done all these uh, personal appearances, and, and now in Florida, the Magic Kingdom, at Walt Disney World, they've uh, made a Herbie Lovebug Hotel. When I go to Walt Disney World, you know where I, I will be staying. There's a, a huge Herbie as you enter and uh, you'll see real big screwdrivers and mechanics wrenches and uh, clapboards. On one of the clapboards, it may have 369 as, as the date. Well, that was when the uh, first Herbie was released, on March of 69. So a lot of detail was taken in the building of this hotel. If somebody came up to me and they said, you know, you want to go meet the president or you want to go see this famous star that's, uh, that's going to be over here or, or, or do you want to go see Herbie? And, you know, honestly, if I really think about this, I would rather go see Herbie. The Love Bug was released in, in the 60s. And so now we're here in the 21st century, and Herbie is continuing on in popularity, and probably even more so, not only with the websites and the new generation of kids. You know, it's great to be able to see that Herbie is just driving on. He's just completely driving on down that road and gaining more and more friends. Oh.